Hello guys, uh, Fru here. Welcome to our presentation uh, for today. We're going to have a really exciting presentation talking about TPC benchmarking. We're going to explain what TPC is. Uh, we're going to talk about the whole industry of benchmarking. Um, we're going to give you some tips and idea on why this is something that every uh, data professional should be aware of, even though some will make the argument that uh, benchmarking is... Uh, uh, it's a dying, uh, it's a dying breed, and there's no need for for this uh, as much. But we're gonna dive in, uh, see some of the history, see what's available out there, and give you uh, some tips and tricks uh, to understand what TPC is all about and how you can incorporate that into uh, your activities as uh, as a data professional. That said, let's dive right in. Uh, what is benchmarking? If we think about benchmarking, why is it something that we we consider? Um, for the average person, if you go out and uh, using a car example here that uh, hopefully a lot of folks will relate to uh, or may, might relate to something similar to this, is if you're going to buy a car, especially here uh, in the Western world, in the U.S., uh, people tend to drive uh, a lot. And, and buying a car is a very big investment uh, for, for folks. So if you're going to buy a car, it's really important to understand uh, what it is you're buying and, and what is... Uh, the, the key performance metrics or some of the KPIs you're looking at to, to purchase that car. So you might want to consider uh, a car that gives you a more utility space-based approach. And so the metric you care about is space. Uh, you might care about uh, mileage and you, you care about the performance uh, with, with gas. Or you might say, hey, I want an electric car. And that becomes your, your key performance indicator, your key metrics to, to, to measure. And for someone else might come to say, hey, I don't care about all of that. I care about uh, the utility of the vehicle. I need a, a pickup truck with a bed so I can haul stuff. And so you're looking at the hauling power. You're looking at the torque. And you're looking at a lot of different metrics. Now, for each individual looking to buy the car, the metrics they pick or the benchmarks they will care about might be different. But if you go out and you ask each of the different uh, car manufacturers to say, hey, which car out there is the best? Uh, a lot of these folks will tell you that uh, their car is the best. And if you ask, why is your car the best? They would pick one metric or one reason and say, my car is the best because it has more space inside. And the other person might say that my car is the best because it has uh, it's more quiet. And this person might say, my car is the best because it, uh, it can tow things faster right uh, to some extent they might be right but for you the buyer for you the person making the choice which one is best for you is there an objective way of looking at it to say hey uh, for this set of criteria, objectively we've tested this in a vendor neutral setting and this is the result this is what which car is the best and this is something that industries as a whole have struggled with. You know, car industries have, have struggled with this um, all the way to the database and analytics industry where we spend a lot of our time. Is something that has also had to, to deal with situations like this. So if we just look at the car industry, what they've figured out is a, a benchmarking criteria for folks that might be looking to buy cars. So you might say, hey, uh, we care about uh, the exterior selections or sections and how uh, good that is. Someone might say, hey, I care more about how many occupants I can have into this in this car. Another individual might say, hey, I, I care about the electronics. I care about self-driving and some of the more exotic uh, features of the car. Others might look at acoustics and say, hey, this car is too noisy. I don't like it. You know, even if it drives fast or it drives... Uh, uh, with a longer range, but if, if the acoustic is bad, you might not like that. Uh, but if you pick the different criteria and put them on a, on a level playing field and say, let's test this according to these criteria for all the cars that we have, a selection of cars, which one is the best? And then you might hopefully with an exercise like this, come up with an objective benchmarking result for which car is the best. So hopefully this gives us a foundation for why benchmarking is something that is, is a relevant uh, topic uh, that companies and, and teams usually would, would think about. Now, what does this mean for, uh, for, the, for the data industry uh, now that we've laid the foundation for benchmarking? 
to dive in into the data side of things, I think it's really important to just get an, a definition that we can work with, a working definition. And what we have here is uh, benchmarking, and this is straight up from the very trusted Wikipedia, so take it for what it is. Uh, benchmarking is the practice of comparing business processes and performance metrics to industry best and best practices from other companies. Dimensions typically measured are quality, time, and cost. So this is just a generic definition of benchmarking. But the key things we want to pay attention to here are performance metrics. And you're looking at it from an industry best. If you create your own product in the basement of your, of your house and no one is using it, and it's not close to industry best, I don't know if you want to be doing benchmarking against that. So when you think about benchmarking, you're really looking for what is the best of the best here according to certain metrics, certain criteria. So cost, time, quality could be one, or it could be whatever the metrics you choose that to, to, to consider it as part of your benchmarking. So with that said, uh, benchmarking is something that... Um, database systems have embraced. Uh, if you think about the, the ecosystem of databases, benchmarking is something very relevant. If you're building an analytical platform, you want to know with all the databases that are out there, which of this is good for your application, which of this is good for your workload, which of this is good for your use case. And so decision makers and organizations have struggled with this for a very long time. If you go to, say, MySQL, they're going to tell you, well, our database is the best. Why? Because of so-and-so. If you go over to some other vendor, they might tell you they believe they have the best database. And they might run their own tests and do their own metrics, but that's their opinion, right? It's like asking the, the mouse who took the cheese, right? They're going to give you an answer that is going to suit uh, uh, their interest. And But what the industry really needs is something a little bit more objective, right? Because if you go ahead and, and you ask somebody, you know, what their flaw is, and they tell you their flaw is because they're too awesome, I don't think that's going to be very helpful to, to anybody, especially if you're building a, a data solution, a data platform, and you really want to get that objective. You want to get an objective point of view, going and asking the vendors of those systems to tell you what their flaw is or to compare themselves against each other is just a recipe for disaster. And so the industry has kind of figured this out. And that's where uh, an objective orbiter like uh, uh, TPC comes into play. And this is where we're going to now go into the whole conversation of TPC. So TPC stands for Transaction Processing Performance Council. Uh, so technically, it should be TPPC. I think that's kind of hard to pronounce, so it's just in short, TPC. So Transaction Processing Performance Council. So this is a council um, of, of vendors and folks that should be objective. Uh, it's a non-profit. It's, uh, it should be vendor-neutral uh, organization with this main goal of providing methods for testing and evaluating performance in database systems. So, so many databases out there. Uh, relational databases, SQL databases, big data databases, you name it. Uh, who is out there performing and doing tests against these databases to say, hey, uh, from a speed perspective, this is the best. From a query perspective, this is the best. And that's where TPC, uh, this council comes in, into play. They have a website. Uh, you can check out the website. Lots of content in there. I'm going to leave a link in the uh, at the end of the presentation. So I recommend if you've heard of TPC in the news or anywhere, just go on the website, read it, and just become really familiar with it. I think it's something every data professional should be aware of, uh, especially if you make decisions about what platform to use or if you hear vendors touting their platform as the best uh, you, and you want a little bit of a better perspective on it. TPC is not the, the panacea, but it's one option available out there in the market. So what are the goals of this council? Uh, the goal of the council is basically to verify existing benchmarks, uh, even defining what those benchmarks sh should be. So if you're going to compare two databases against each other or two data systems against each other or two solutions against each other, what should those criteria be for testing? Because the criteria you choose to test even uh, is a decision you have to make, and that could uh, have its own implications. So defining what those benchmarking criteria are creating the processes to test and to review, to monitor those 
uh, the, the testing that has happened, and then to also um, uh, be the arbiter to uh, for issue resolution for disputes, handling that if there are challenges, uh, making sure that those get resolved as part of that council, and uh, just laying the law of the land, the, the rules of the of the landscape. So that's what the TPC uh, council is really about. They meet about. I think it's uh, six times uh, a year or so, five or six times annually. Uh, in the world we live now, some of the meetings might be might be virtual. They influence the direction, this, uh, the council and the membership, they influence the direction, uh, they vote budget. It's a non-profit, of course, but they still have to have a budget. Um, and they have standing committees and all of that to really uh, guide the, the, the direction and the activities of the TPC uh the tpc council so this is this might be an older list uh but here are some of the the members that are currently a part of uh tpc so if you think about the the large vendors out there they have an interest in being members of uh, of uh, the tpc council because they have solutions that are going to be tested uh, i'm not saying that it's a pay pay uh, you know pay for play kind of situation but draw for it what you will uh, that uh, folks are members of a council that uh, test themselves, right? Um, uh, it's like bringing chefs together and asking them to to test their food and tell you which food is the best. Uh, you you get really interesting results from there. So uh, I, I digress with, with this point. But if we go in in terms of what membership entails, it's not free. Uh, it, it's a nonprofit. TPC is a nonprofit organization, but membership you have to pay. Uh, as of making this video, it's about 15,000 for two different levels of membership. So uh, 15,000 gives you full membership and uh, associate membership is about uh, 1,500, so $1,500. It gives you membership and there are responsibilities for, for those members. I think we talked about that here, attending meetings, influencing direction, budget and all of that, right? So again, we're not talking about making any claims here for pay for play. But you can uh, insinuate that uh, for folks that don't have the money to pay for this, what happens to their own benchmark? So this gives you an idea of what the membership is about. Now, just for a little bit of history, TPC has been around for a while. So if you're watching this video, it's not something that just came up today. So this started back in about 1998 uh, when um, uh, the database vendors and the systems were kind of fighting with each other, doing their own in-house tests. And proving themselves to be the best. Uh, and so TPC uh, stepped in uh, with the first test, I think it was somewhere in 1998, uh, really with the TPCA. Um, uh, and ever since there's been different variations of the test that has come up. And we're gonna go into details in terms of what the, the alphabets behind that mean, right? TPCA, TPCB, TPCD, DSE, some of these are obsolete, but uh, hopefully you get an idea. The ones in red are absolute uh, test. Uh, but it's been around, it's evolved over the years for different benchmarks. So as you had transaction processing, OLATP type of processing, uh, the tests were focused on that. But then as analytical workloads started becoming more popular, the tests when tests were needed for that. And then all of a sudden we had big data, we have IoT, machine learning, virtualization, and a lot of different things that have uh, uh, necessitated the need for creating new tests. So you can see AI and uh, big data and virtualization, IoT, some of those tests are newer, starting from 2015 to 16, a bunch of tests were introduced. Uh, but TPC has been one of the longest uh, running uh, tests uh, in that uh, industry for a while. So it's been around, uh, this benchmarking resource has been around for a while. Now, who can uh, create or perform a, a benchmark test in, in TPC? So you might say, yeah, TPC is interesting. I want to I have uh, this amazing database. Uh, I want to test it. Who can do it? In in reality, uh, anyone can go out and perform a benchmark test. Now, it does take considerable amount of of time and resources and effort to do an effective test. Because once you do your test, you publish the result. People are going to challenge that result and and validate that is correct. Uh, you need hardware for that. You need the time. You need the setup and, and all of that. So. In theory, anyone can go ahead and perform a test. But in reality, there are people that have resources. So the vendors of the different databases, it's in their interest to go out and conduct this test or to hire folks who can go out and conduct this test 
publish the results and then hopefully the results are not challenged and they can claim the top spot. So you might say, hey, which is the fastest analytical database? And you're looking at uh, TPCDS and someone might publish a result to say, hey, we're the fastest. And people are going to go out and challenge that. You have about 60 days or so when the result is published to challenge that and it goes to the council if there are any disputes. Uh, so there is some bureaucracy behind, but in, in theory, in theory, anyone can perform a, a benchmark test on, on TPC, even though it takes uh, resources to make that happen. Now, if you say, yeah, anyone can perform uh, a TPC test, well, who can validate those results? If I just sit in my basement today and I claim to have performed uh, a TPC test against MySQL, well, and I publish my result, who goes to audit that? Who goes to validate to say, hey, that result makes sense? And so part of that organization has TPC certified auditors, right? That can go in and audit uh, the benchmark results that are published. So you can be a certified auditor and you can, uh, there are privileges that come with that and different stages uh, and you can go ahead and validate the results. So you can read here, uh, TPC results can only be audited by individuals who have completed TPCS three-stage auditor certification process. So there's a certification process you go through. Uh, I think it also uh, requires going to an uh, auditor certification board uh, for an interview. And if you go through all of that, um, then and you get certified, now you can audit results and say, hey, uh, if a result was published and auditors think that result made sense, then it's going to hold. But if there are any disputes, then more folk then uh, it can go for ad arbitration or for resolution uh, as well. So the TPC certified auditor is something that uh, you you can definitely uh, consider. But but here's a food for thought for us, um, especially when we talk about audits. The, the big question we end up with is who audits the audits, right? Or who audits the auditors? So that's just something to think about. Um, you know, you have uh, tests that can be done and you have auditors that are certified to audit those tests. And the question is, who is going to audit those auditors who are certified to audit the audits? So you can go into infinite regress here with this, but just definitely something to think about, especially with stakes so high in, in this space and a good result, meaning good business for these vendors or bad business for the vendors. You can see that there are a lot of incentives to uh, to juggle things around and, and, and people... Uh, with the right incentives who do things that uh, you might not be too uh, excited about. So just something to think about as we think about uh, this whole industry of benchmarking and, and TPC in, in particular. Now, why is there a need for different databases or different benchmarking as we, as we saw earlier? Uh, and this slide will just give us a, a quick illustration of why, right? Because if you think about how uh, data systems have evolved in the past is coming from OLTP, so Online Transactional System, where you're thinking about, and really coming from the banking industry. And uh, in there, you're looking at um, um, bank reconciliation, you're looking at a, a workload whose characteristics is a little bit different than if you're looking at OLAP, where you're doing more analytical processing with aggregations and, and heavy analytics, and all the way to data science. Uh, so there are databases that are good for all ATP, and you want to have tests that is relevant for that. You're not going to take a test that you do for for all ATP and assume it's going to be effective for a data platform which is meant for OLAP. And as a result, we have the different versions of tests uh, under the TPC uh, uh, family for for testing. So as a matter of fact, that the list is uh, is quite a bit uh, of tests, a lot of them. Um, I would recommend you go to the website to see the details of every one of these tests. But the main areas that are available out there for testing is uh, the common one, which would be transaction processing. So TPC is, is the common one for transaction processing. And then there's also TPCE. Now, if you're looking more at decision support, so more analytical type of workload and queries uh, for analytical needs, aggregations, heavy scanning, uh, then you're looking at TPCH or TPCDS and even TPCI. And again, there are details behind this on, on the website. Now for big data, uh, which has become popular uh, in the last couple of years here uh, with its own characteristics and workloads and, and different uh, data platforms for this, what you'd be looking at for a test for that would be the TPCXHS uh, and the TPCXBB, right? So really 
I don't know if the BB stands for big data, but it definitely has a meaning behind that. And then on the other side, you have virtualization, Internet of Things, AI, and all of that have their own versions of the test. So what the TPC company or organization provides is the specification for each of these tests. They don't do the test themselves. They basically provide the specification to say, hey, if you're going to test uh, an IoT system, here is the guidelines, here is the specification, here are the key performance metrics, here is the, the things that you can measure uh, or you can measure. And once you go out and you measure that and you document your results and people validate that, then it stands. Uh, if not, then it gets challenged. So um, all of these different criteria we've seen here, uh, there are specifications. If you want to test that, if you have a product in any of these spaces and you want to benchmark it, you can go out, get the specification, uh, run your own benchmark and publish your results, right? So AI is another one which is becoming popular. And then there are some common specifications for, for industries and verticals like energy uh, and pricing. And then you have some more obsolete uh, benchmarks, which used to be relevant in the past, but are not relevant anymore. So TPCA, uh, TPC applications, or our app, TPCB and D and R and VM, uh, VMS and, and W. So uh, those are absolute, uh, those are not tests you can do anymore or wouldn't, wouldn't be relevant in the industry. And then sorting is also, or advanced sorting options is, has a bunch of tests, which if you're just looking at taking a huge amount of data set and being able to apply sorting against that on, on different platforms, there are specifications for testing that. So on the TPC, uh, TPC uh, C or TPC DS, uh, there are sorting options for that. So uh, definitely something that you should, um, uh, you can take a look at, uh, go on the website, see the specifications. Lots of vendors are, are with products in these spaces are, uh, are doing their benchmarks, publishing the results, and and folks are going out there to uh, to review those results and to challenge those results. So here is a link to the TPC Orc uh, website. Uh, you can check that link out. Uh, really great. It's a very useful website. And then from the last benchmark results that have been published, you can see here uh, Supermicro updates on TPCX HS. Uh, and if you remember, HS was, uh, what was HS again? Uh, HS was big data, right? So um, there's a test for that that was published. And you can see some of the vendors have published tests uh, here. And this test, they have 60 days, they get challenged, and some of them are going to stick, some of them are not going to stick. So just something to be aware of, and you can go on that link uh, to check out TPC. Now, so if somebody comes in and asks you which database is the best, uh, you might want to say, hey, uh, according to the TPC result, and you can go find a TPC result and say, hey, for analytics or for, or for data science or for IoT, this database or this solution is the best. And the whole goal for TPC is to be that uh, vendor neutral uh, objective arbiter with the specifications that can be tested in, uh, in a neutral environment with results that people can trust. Now, to say that this has always been the case is going to be misleading because there's definitely been controversies, people trying to uh, monkey around with those results and, and, and make them their yeah, products look good. So uh, take it for what it is. It, it's, uh, it's a test. Like with any other test, uh, if with strong enough incentives, people are going to try to um, to make the results look uh, favorable for them. Uh, but there you have it. Uh, hopefully, you now know what TPC is all about. Uh, you have resources to go out and to check them on, on your website. Uh, and if someone mentions that uh, a new TPC result was published, you, you're equipped with the, uh, with the knowledge to understand what that's all about and to uh, do some more further understanding uh, of it. Um, hopefully, this was helpful to everyone. Again, thanks for watching and sticking with us uh, with this uh, great presentation. Again, this has been uh, through Tech with Fru. As always, you've been very awesome sticking to the end. I have been through. I will see you in our next lecture.